2.0 has become positively unhinged. Because now you can make videos with no watermark at all. And you don't even have to use the app anymore. What's more, you can now upload an image to act as your starting frame. Giving you total control over everything you create. We already knew Sora was a game changer, darling. But now, its true potential has been revealed to the world. And now you can run the model with no limits, baby. Yeah, this is going to be fun. Just let that color dance right in there. Little happy hair strokes. <laughs> That's nice. Hicksfield AI just added Sora 2 to their platform and this currently comes with unlimited generations. Now that's the first game changer. The second, of course, is that your generations won't come with a watermark plastered all over them like they do when you generate within the Sora app itself. So really this takes Sora from just being good at making memes to a functional tool when it comes to AI filmmaking like you guys saw in the intro. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get the most out of Sora. I'll show you the mistakes I made whilst getting to grips with the tool so that you can make your credits go further and master this insane new AI video generator as quickly as possible. As always, guys, if you do enjoy today's content, make sure to whack a like on there for me. Consider subscribing and, of course, ring that bell notification icon. You can check out Sora on Higgsfield by clicking the link below in the description. And with that being said, let's get straight into the video. So the first scene that I started working on for the intro was the Queen of England driving a jet ski down the River Thames with these fireworks going off in the background. And what I learned really quickly, and this is really cool, and I think it's definitely one of the positives when it comes to Sora, is that you will often get music baked in as well as sound effects and voiceover as well. The best thing about Sora, in my opinion, is its world understanding and its world building. So you can give it quite a simple text prompt and it will do absolutely everything it can to really flesh that idea out in terms of both visuals and audio. However, for certain use cases, you might not want audio. So what I started doing quite soon in the process was adding this to the end, no music, just to specify that I just want the sound effects and the speech synthesis baked in. I will show you a couple of these early generations because they are really good. I think when you have music baked in, it functions better as a little self-contained story. But if you're trying to stitch lots of these clips together like I did in the intro, you don't really want music behind each clip because it's gonna be very jarring when you cut between them, especially if you're only on them for like a short period of time. And then I laid that music track underneath all of the video clips to kind of tie them together and give this feeling of consistency even though each of the scenes and the characters featured are very different. So we'll take a look here at what Sora does in terms of adding music before I told it not to put any on there. So you can see it goes a little bit buggy at the end there, but the music that it added really did fit the scene. Visually, it looks great, but one of the issues is that I did put in the text prompt that I want the queen to say, Sora 2 has become positively unhinged, and that just doesn't happen. I don't know why, sometimes AI just ignores what you say. And that doesn't just go for this model or this platform, it goes for all AI. Another generation here. become positively unhinged. So I really like that one, except for the Sora 2 is missing. So you can see again, it kind of struggled with carrying out the specific prompt that I asked for. However, visually again, it's great. I love how it's put the Union Jack on the jet ski. And it even knows to make the Queen's voice kind of muffled because it's underneath that helmet. Another generation here. The Sora 2.0 has become positively unhinged. So there you go. You can see that one actually worked really well. We've still got music on there, which fits the scene really nicely. And the queen is saying exactly what I wanted her to. Scrolling up a little bit more here, you can see every now and then your generations are just gonna fail. I just suggest that you hit the retry button. It will come up and tell you if there's something wrong with your prompt and if the moderation has kicked in saying that whatever you're trying to generate is not okay. 
and it's not comfortable with carrying out the video generation itself. Here is just a standard error. So yeah, just hit retry. So scrolling up, we've got Marilyn Monroe, we've got Martin Luther King and Elvis Presley, a couple of different generations of Elvis here. And actually I wanna show you guys this one because once again, I forgot to add no music on the end, but what I got out of Sora is actually really impressive. And now you can run the model with no limits, baby. Amazing how his voiceover and the music fit together so well. And this is what I'm talking about when I discuss the idea of world building. This feels like it actually happened and like it was shot on someone's phone. And that actually acts as a nice segue into one of the downsides when it comes to Sora. I'm sure you guys have noticed the resolution itself isn't really the problem. That's what I'm trying to get at. It's more the look of compression. Now you could go ahead and use an AI video upscaler to try and work around this a little bit. But this level of compression that you get from Sora Generations, it's always gonna be there to some extent. So personally, I think it's more of a case of leaning into this aesthetic where the generations look like they're kind of filmed on someone's iPhone or maybe even like a GoPro in some instances. And by leaning into the aesthetic, the example I would give is PJ Ace when he made his VO3 ad that was shown at the Super Bowl. Now VO3 is amazing, right? But it feels like VO3 and a lot of it feels like AI. And that Super Bowl ad, felt like AI, but that was kind of the whole point. That was the whole concept of the advert, right? PJ Ace and his team, they approached that in a very intelligent way. Rather than kind of fighting against the issues that VO3 had, they kind of embraced them. And that's what I would suggest you guys should do if you want to use Sora 2. It's what we did in the intro and I feel like it worked really well. The best use cases and a lot of the videos that are going viral online at the minute are very tongue in cheek and they lean into this shot on phone vibe. Something else that you can do if your AI video generations are a little bit compressed. This isn't just Sora. This can be any tool that you might be using if you feel like the result doesn't look all that great. Within your editor of choice, you can add a layer of film grain on top. Now, this in itself is a bit of an aesthetic choice that some people like, some people don't like. Personally, for me, I think it adds back a layer of texture and it makes the compression or the kind of lack of fidelity look a little bit more purposeful. Again, you're leaning into that kind of aesthetic choice, the whole shot on phone or shot on GoPro thing. So yeah, just another idea there. If you guys are into your AI filmmaking and you want to use Sora and you want to just add a little bit more professionalism, you could go for a bit of upscaling if you can afford it. A lot of the AI video upscalers are pretty expensive or you can go ahead add a layer of film grain just to put some of that texture back in there, make things look a little bit more deliberate. We've got our Marilyn Monroe generation here. We already knew Sora was a game changer, darling. And I think what's really cool is that Sora really does have this great understanding of all of these famous figures. It's not just their iconic voices that Sora understands, it's their mannerisms as well. Even the kind of iconic clothing or outfits that they would often wear. And if we scroll up a little bit more, we're gonna run into one of the other problems when it comes to Sora, and that is censorship or moderation. What I found was that certain celebrities who might be deemed a little bit more controversial, uh, Sora just didn't wanna know. Here I was trying to generate a video of Donald Trump. I tried multiple times multiple different scenes, multiple reworked prompts. No, wasn't happening. You guys probably saw a lot of the viral videos of Michael Jackson stealing a bucket of KFC chicken and also Jake Paul having makeup put on him. I could not generate those here either. Not sure whether you can still generate those within the Sora app itself. If so, that's clearly less moderated. But again, you've got that watermark, which is a real deal breaker for me. It, it just makes it kind of useless as an AI filmmaking tool, in my opinion. If you want to use it to make like viral memes and stuff, great. But still, ugh. I don't know, I just find it kind of frustrating. And if we scroll up a little bit here, I was trying to get Bob Ross painting a portrait of Sam Altman. Again, Sam Altman stuff, not happening. 
had this really great one here of Albert Einstein, uh, kind of a little bit more subtle than the one that I ended up using in the intro. I wanted to put him in like a gaming setup. So he had like gaming headphones and like a cool like RGB setup behind him and stuff. But this one here is really cool as well. A little bit more subtle, love the glasses. There's a lot to really like here. What's more? You can now upload an image to act as your starting frame. So you'll see as we run through this video, Sora seems to really like famous historical figures. Modern day celebrities, not as much. A couple more of the Einstein generations. This is the one that we ended up using in the intro. Another fail here due to moderation. I was trying to show Steve Jobs delivering a keynote and holding an iPhone. I wanted him to say that you don't have to use the Sora app anymore and then throw his phone, but yeah, that was not just going through. But this is what I find weird. It allows you to do the Stephen Hawking ones, which I think are pretty controversial, right? Like dark humor, in my opinion, to allow generations of something like this where Stephen Hawking is going down a skate ramp. But I don't know what the rules are anymore, guys. I don't know, look, he even falls over at the end. And I've got to talk as well about the final shot in the intro, the Bob Ross shot, where I got him to paint using his hair. This generation came out so good, it genuinely blew my mind because the text prompt itself was really simple and Sora again felt the need to step in and flesh out the idea and kind of contribute to the world building in a big way. So the text prompt itself was Bob Ross painting using his own hair. His hair is covered in paint. He says, yeah, this is going to be fun. Let's look at what Sora gave us just from that simple prompt. Yeah, this is going to be fun. Just let that color dance right in there. Little happy hair strokes. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Do you see how much it added, how much it fleshed out the idea, considering I gave it so little to work with? And in a way, this is the opposite to a lot of other generative AI tools where you have to give them so much information to get back something that actually functions for your concept. Just to finish off the video as well, I ran just a few kind of random prompts here and you'll see that we did get some mixed results, some good and some bad. I wanted to go for the classic, a gymnast performing on a balance board. So let's take a look at that. She sets up for the series, front handspring, right into back handspring, solid connection, layout stuck on the beam, excellent control, full turn, no waiver. Split. So in a weird way, the physics of this are actually quite good. It's confusing because it's like she's forgotten not only how to be a gymnast, but how to like function as a human being as well. Kind of looks like a video game character like glitching out or lagging or something. But the way that the gymnast actually moves is fairly realistic, I would say. And again, the kind of audio sound effects that were added really do function to kind of flesh out the story quite nicely. Of course, the way she's moving, Probably wouldn't function if you actually wanted somebody who was a good gymnast. Really not sure what she's doing. Definitely unique. Here I just put in a man doing backflips. Very simple prompt. So physics again, pretty decent. Goes a little bit skew if at the end, but I do like the music that Sora has added. And I really like the speed ramps that have been baked into this generation as well, where the whole shot is slowing down to show the flips actually happening and then going back to normal speed, pretty cool. Now I just went for a skateboarder doing tricks. Let's have a quick look. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what happens uh, with the fence or the gate or whatever. That's a new skate trick in my book. I've never seen that before. But before that moment, that skate trick itself is really quite good in terms of physics. Remember, AI video tools really struggle with physics and kind of understanding how an object or a person kind of reacts in the real world. That looks pretty good to me, apart from when he does the weird thing with the gate. I don't know what's happening there. Then we've got a high speed car chase. Kind of cool, a little bit weird as well. Not sure what to make of that one, to be honest. But then we go on to the snowboarder doing tricks. This is pretty impressive. So 
again, we've got those cool kind of speed ramps built in. And if you didn't want the music there, you could just add no music to the end of your prompt. If you wanted to maybe have like a montage of somebody doing snowboarding or like a whole collection of different people performing different tricks on the slopes. And just to end off here, a really random prompt that popped into my head. An alien watching a movie in the cinema eating popcorn as the people surrounding him look at him awkwardly. Again, very random prompt, which Sora approached in a pretty cool way. Is it? Eating? Yep. Loudly. Good film. Uh-huh. Really cool. Love the music. Love the way that the alien is moving. All of the people looking over, just looking kind of disgusted and confused. The setting itself really quite impressive if you guys have any questions at all regarding sora or higgsfield be sure to drop them down below in the comment section i really do try to reply to as many as i possibly can if you've enjoyed today's video make sure to whack a like on there for me consider subscribing and of course ring that bell notification icon so that you never miss any future videos if you do want to go ahead and check out sora through higgsfield you can click the link down below in the video description and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching and i will catch you in the next video.